Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part two of Iron Man's electronics system. We're going to be starting by putting electronics into the helmet. So in part one, I showed you the electronic um, modules I was going to be using, and those include a wireless link. So um, I've got this working and, and sort of set up now. So let's have a look at the transmitter. So what I've got here is a Pickaxe 08M development board which has got just a single pickaxe on. It's also got an op-amp on, and that's going to be the op-amp that provides... Um, it's a digital-to-analog converter that drives a PWM driver to drive a Unibeam. So that's going to be driven off this board as well. But for this part, we only really need to know about the microcontroller. Um, we've got a couple of switches on this bit of breadboard. Those eventually are going to be replaced by magnetic reed switches, and they're going to be placed into the hip pods of the suit. So a magnetic reed switch is a switch that's activated when you bring a magnet nearby. So these go on the hips of Iron Man. Um, I'll have a, a magnet in the finger of the glove, and when I bring it near to the hip pods, that will activate the switches. But for now, I've just got these switches on the board so that I can just do some simple testing without having to wear the Iron Man gloves. Um, these are basically uh, navigation switches for the entire control system. The one on the left is effectively a select or a, a toggle switch that scrolls through menu options. And the one on the right it, uh, then selects that option. So you'll scroll through for opening and closing the faceplate, turning on and off the unibeam. And when you want to activate one of the functions, you'll press the other switch or bring your other finger next to the hip pod and that'll activate the feature of the suit. So in part one, I showed you the wireless links. This one is the transmitter and this is the aerial. So all of that's going to be mounted into the body of the suit, um, along with the Unibeam PWM driver, possibly a soundboard and some other things. Now that's just the battery that powers it. Got a five volt regulator, so really the breadboard isn't used very much. It's just there to hold the switches. So the actual modules are fairly small. So over on the other side, we've got the receiving part of it. And the receiver module is actually just off here with another coil of wire. And that basically just takes the data sent by the transmitter. It displays on this screen some characters. So as I scroll through the menu options, the words are displayed on this screen for the various functions. And that screen's going to be fitted just in the front of the helmet, just under the eyes. Um, it's not too close to my eyes, so I can actually look down whilst wearing the helmet and see what it says. So between using my fingers with the magnets on the hip pods and looking at the display, that means I can control the suit. So the other boards we've got here are another Pickaxe 08M board, and that's providing a control signal for the servo in the faceplate. It's also switching a relay, so if you have a look at my electronic faceplate series, I've got magnetic braking going on so that I can lock the servo in place. So that's in part two of the faceplate um, and motorised helmet videos. That board is also going to switch a MOSFET, which will switch the light up eyes on and off. Have a look at the video on that in my channel. Um, and everything is powered by four double A's, which will be in single AA battery boxes down the two back corners of the helmet. And the additional board there is just a big five volt regulator to drive the servo and the pickaxe chip that drives the servo to keep that constant. Um, I've got some other power supply components on this board. There are some issues with the wireless receiver because when the motor runs, the voltage drops, and so these capacitors act as a bit of a reservoir to stop things browning out, because otherwise the wireless link crashes. But those capacitors seem to have solved the issue. So the pickaxe board here uh, on the helmet end is actually listening to the same serial bus. So I'm sending, as I said, menu options and activation commands down the wireless link, which are displayed on this display. Um, the board that activates the faceplate is look, looking for some specific characters, and when it sees them, then opens and closes the faceplate. So if I turn on the transmitter, we should see the green lights flashing, and it's sending data to the display that says Jarvis ready. And Jarvis is, of course, the, the uh, control system from Iron Man. It stands for just a really very intelligent system. So if I start scrolling through now with the transmitter, with the left-hand button, we should get various uh, menu options, so open, close, and unibeam. That's all I've programmed so far. If we select the other button um, on any of those options, then another line of display appears. On In this case, let's just zoom in. It says powering. 
and that's going to power up the unibeam which will obviously be controlled by the transmitter electronics rather than the helmet and that'll power up and down over I believe it's a 5 to 10 second cycle so I can keep scrolling through again open close um, I need one for the eyes for the eyes on and off which will probably do a similar thing to the unibeam so that'll be one menu option so if I go to open and actually select it then it should open the faceplate and if I scroll back round again to close then it closes again and you can um, select that again so if something went wrong and it didn't close you know you can hit it again you can hear the relay clicking there to unlock the brake um, so there we go faceplate open faceplate closed so that's pretty much how it's going to work. I still need to wire in the eyes, as I say, and I need to fit all of this into the helmet. So that's the next part of the video. So it's several days later, and all the electronics are now fitted into the helmet. So let's have a look. So the front there, you can see the display and the servo, the relay that goes with it. There's a little, um, the pickaxe board is just there. Um, in the top of the helmet, we've got the wireless receiver, power supply stuff is in there and we've got the batteries are just in the back of the helmet there. So if we turn this on, it's a little switch just at, right at the back there, makes the eyes flash um, four times and then they turn off and we can see the display there is currently saying it's a serial OLED. I've got the transmitter just here so if I turn on the transmitter should say Jarvis ready and now I can go and scroll through with the buttons completely wirelessly so open close I've put a new function in for the eyes if we turn that round and hit the execute button they flash a few times and then stay on for four seconds and then go off we've still got the um, empty function for unibeam which will power on the unibeam in the chest and we're back to open, so if I put that down and hit open and execute it, then the faceplate opens. If I just have a quick look inside and should be the next function to scroll for close, push the button again, it shuts and the eyes flash, stay on for four seconds, and off they go again. So, um, that's pretty much it. The uh, It does fit on my head despite all this stuff in here. The next thing I'm going to do on this video is add in the uh, some bits of foam so it's more comfortable and it sits on my head square. And then I'll put it in my on my head and we can see it operating. So there we go, I've got some foam in the helmet now so the helmet stays um, nice and securely on my head. I've got the wireless transmitter to my right here. As I mentioned at the start of the movie, I'd have... Uh, the switches with magnetic um, reed switches in the hip pods so I'd be tapping my hip pods to control the functions. For now I can navigate through so um, I can see that says closed, the display is obviously up here now. I can have, um, I can have other information on there as well such as battery monitoring and other bits and pieces for the suit that I can program in in the future. So if I um, execute the close function And then I can scroll through again, so I can see that um, I can turn, that says eyes, so I can turn the eyes on by themselves. And I can scroll through again past Unibeam, back to open. And there we go, so it's fairly easy to control, um, obviously without having multiple switches on the suit, which was the reason that I started doing it this way. So let's go back to close. And there we go. So I still have the teeth sections to fill in and some more padding around the face there so you can't see the servo and a few other bits and pieces but on the whole I'm quite happy with that so far. So that's all for this video but don't forget to check out my Facebook page for sneak peeks and updates, subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my website for more pictures of all the projects. Also, you should check out my Patreon campaign. Check out patreon.com slash xrobots. 
to get some exclusive rewards, including a live broadcast with me, access to an exclusive discussion group, and all my digital downloads for free.